Hey everybody, TR back with another RV how-to video. And this time, it's the biggest project I've ever done on an RV. I must be a little crazy. Well, and it turns out I might have been a little crazy, but Either way, I'm gonna replace the EDPM rubber roof on Rusty, my 2004 Newmar Dutch Star Class A motorhome. So let's start with a little bit of background about how I got to where I am today. In 2013, I was wintering in Denver, Colorado, and in typical Denver fashion, it would snow and warm up and snow and warm up, and then one time though, it snowed, it warmed up, and then it hauled off and froze solid. And I ended up with a bunch of ice damming on the roof, and that created a leak in the rear right corner of the roof. I noticed some leaking into one of the cabinets in the bedroom, and so I knew I had a bit of a problem. As soon as I could, I got up there and cleared the ice off the roof and got it dried out and then sealed up the seams with some Eternabond tape. And that seemed to work. It, it at least stopped the leak inside. In 2016, when I was prepping Rusty to move back into him for my full-time retirement, I'd finally decided I'd had enough of work and uh, was doing some work on the roof and noticed I'd had some critters up there digging around. Plus, over in the area that had leaked in 2013 that I knew about, the plywood was all kind of buckled, and when you'd step on it, it'd crunch. So I knew I had a problem up there, and then ultimately I was going to have to replace the sheathing and probably the entire roof because uh, it's impossible to patch these rubber roofs like this and get them to hold solid. And So frankly, I just decided I was going to live with the situation until an opportunity presented itself where I could do something about it. And I'd looked into replacing the rubber roof and uh, decided I could probably do it myself. I'd watched a few videos on YouTube, which were woefully lacking in detail. And I'm going to remedy that with this series of videos. But I knew just as soon as I got the roof off this RV, it was going to rain. I don't care where I was. Drought ridden, drought stricken, it didn't matter. As soon as you take the roof off of something, it rains. That's just a fact of life. So you have to be prepared for that. And so I was looking for some kind of a covered space that I could use, rent, borrow, beg, steal, well, not steal, but beg, borrow. So I picked out a few cities uh, that I knew I would be near or could be in for winter, like Las Vegas or Phoenix or Tucson. And I put some ads out on Craigslist looking for some tall shops that I could do the work in. I did that for two years running, and I never did really find anybody that would come back to me. There was one response, but his shop wasn't nearly big enough. So I was kind of stuck. And I knew I needed to get the roof resolved because I want to add solar, much more solar than what I had at the time, uh, and it really didn't make sense to put solar up there and then have to take it off again to replace the roof because knowing that you needed to have the roof replaced in the first place, it just it just didn't make sense. So I had to get the roof replaced first. And I was wanting to get the solar done, so I started to get some quotes, and I'd reached out to the Newmar factory and uh, got a quote for that and a couple of other things, but it worked out to where the roof was going to probably be around 8000 bucks. That's about what I expected. You know, I had uh, seen some other videos, commercial videos of where they'd done it online and, and reached out and contacted, you know, these companies and got some quotes and they were anywhere from 6,500 to 9,000 bucks. And so, you know, I was looking at, let's just say 7,500 to make it a round number. And I was willing to pay that, you know, to get the roof replaced, it would have been worth it. I had a change of plans uh, that took me back up to Idaho about a month earlier than I'd expected I would be there. And while I was in Shoshone helping out a buddy, I was out visiting with some old friends and I stopped by a place called Ross Lumber because I had done a camera system, security camera system for Rick about, oh gosh, I don't know, quite a while ago. And I just stopped to say hi and see how the thing, if it was still working, I'm at least seven years. Well, one thing led to another and uh, we got to talking and I got to talking about, you know, wanting to do the roof and he offered up shop. And with the equipment that he had available, it just uh, made good sense to do the roof right then and there. I had the time available. The stars had aligned. Somebody had provided me a shop tall enough and big enough for me to get the RV into. And so I thought, man, i got to get this done. So I started working to get all of the materials ordered in. And I found everything I needed on Amazon, except that the terminating bars, these aluminum terminating bars you put on the edge of the roof to to hold it down and to seal it. It was going to cost twice as much as they were actually costing to get the things shipped in because they were 10 foot length, so they'd have to go on a freight truck. Well, I got to looking around and I found a rubber roof supply company in Twin Falls and uh, got some terminating bars there for six bucks a piece. 
Anyway, so pretty much all the equipment came together. I got all my materials put together and uh, got started on this project. But before we get started on the project, I want to take a brief pause and a big shout out and a thank you to Rick Ross at Ross Lumber. I tried to pay him. I tried to give him some cash for rent on the shop and use of his forklift and electricity for the fridge and so on and so forth, but he wouldn't have it. What can, what can you say, you know, except thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, since he wouldn't accept my pay, I'm going to do a little commercial here for him. Rick has two huge warehouses full of some of the most amazing reclaimed lumber you could ever want to get your hands on. He's got these huge thick slabs of pine and oak and uh, walnut there that like you see these big conference room tables made out of so if you're looking for that kind of stuff give rick a shout he's easy to find just google ross lumber in shoshone idaho i've broken this up into four episodes to be able to show you the detail on this project okay enough of my chatter we're going to start at day zero as i called it where i wasn't really doing any work i was just working out how to get this dang eterna bond tape off the roof they don't call it eterna bond for nothing so uh this stuff sticks really good to the <laughs> to the coach itself. It sticks okay to the uh, rubber roof as well. And uh, it did seal up a problem I had, but uh, it's been a real bugger to get off. And so I finally found a technique that seems to be working pretty good. First off, kind of just got to get it. I don't care about it coming off the roof itself. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and split like right here with the utility knife. And that's giving me a nice way to uh, get into the seam there. I'm going to get this knife off. So a hot knife did a pretty good job of uh, taking that off the top of the coach here. Uh, there's still a little bit left there. I think I can probably take most of that off with some like paint thinner or something like that. I'll figure that out and we'll uh, take a look at that here in a bit. But what I'm mostly interested in now is getting to this hold down strip and uh, being able to take the screws out of it. Welcome to day one. I've moved over to Ross Lumber where I'm going to finish this project. So basically what I'm working on here is just removing the screws from the termination bars. I spent about an hour and a half in total doing that. There's about a billion of these uh, one inch self tappers in here. Where I could and get access to the screw head, I could just take the screws out. I didn't have to pick the die core out or the sealing out like with this air horn. All right, gonna need a wrench to take those apart. But then you get in a situation like with this cover here where the satellite cables come through the roof. And you gotta pick all that die core back to be able to get onto the screw head. About time for a new battery, it sounds like. Yepper. I think we just ran out of poop. Hope that other battery's charged. All right, so here we are just uh, chipping along. Got the uh, air horns loose. I gotta go get a wrench to get them taken off. Plus my battery's dead, gotta go get a fresh battery. But uh, slowly but surely, we're making some progress here. Uh, got most of the screws out of the uh, rubber roof retaining bars. So I uh, got a little bit of work to do there though. There's a lot of that uh, die core sealant uh, on some of the screws. And so I gotta go pick some of that off to get to them. But uh, making good progress here. So uh, stick around, there's still more to come. Lots more to come actually. So let's speed things up here a little bit. I'm pulling off the uh, sailor booster antenna there. That's the cover for the fridge, the old fridge vent. I had filled that in in 2016 when I replaced that fridge. All right, so I got quite a bit more of this to do and uh, I'm gonna save some film here since uh, this is pretty boring watching me peel these things up. I think you get the idea. But uh, I'll be back in a little while when I kind of get ready to pull the uh, AC units off. How's that sound? Thanks for watching. Well, the wind's come up pretty good, and uh, not to be surprised, this is Shoshone. <laughs> and the wind blows here a lot, but uh, we're making good progress. I pretty much have everything uh, off except the uh, two air conditioning units and a little bit of uh, one vent and one uh, the ladder at the back. 
and it's uh, about 3, 130, so I've been working on this about five hours now. So not bad, I think I'm making pretty good progress, so uh, we'll just keep chipping at it. I just can't say enough thanks to Rick for allowing me to use his shopping tools. It's held to the roof with some uh, 3 8 inch lag screws. Newmar reinforced the roof underneath these with sheets of metal to give you a place to screw into to hold it down firmly. And so basically it's time to take the electrical connections and signal wires loose so I can get this unit off the coach. And that's pretty much it for day one. Shortly after this, the storm started to roll in, so it was time to move inside. Welcome back to day two on how to replace your RV's roof. I uh, got a pretty good start on it yesterday, but thunderstorms showed up, and I had to move inside, so I'm sitting inside the shop now. That was my backup plan all along, because when you take your roof off, you know it's going to rain. You can count on it. So rain dancers have nothing on taking off a roof and <laughs> expecting it to rain. Anyway, uh, we got a full day ahead of us today. We're going to finish stripping off this old roof. I'll give you a quick tour here and just kind of let you see what we've got done. And then uh, I'm going to dig into it. So that's the rear air conditioner. And uh, you can see I have just a couple things left. I've got to get this ladder loose. Uh, I've got that old vent there. I started on it, broke the vent off, but I've got to go in and clean that all up and get the screws out. I've got... I've got most of the screws removed from the uh, rubber roof terminating strips. So uh, that's the skylight into the uh, bathroom, into the shower. Kitchen vent. Bathroom vent. Uh, that's the old fringe vent. That's actually going to get covered up. We don't need it anymore. I'm going to relocate that cable that you see hanging out of there. That's for my cellular booster. That hole there is the range vent. Uh, that's from the uh, microwave. It has a smoke and grease vent on it. You see that I got a little lower clearance in here to work, but we're going to make it work because we're in and out of the rain, and that's a plus. All right, so uh, I'm going to go around and just check the perimeter here and try to get the rest of the screws out. There's some uh, digging and prying I got to do. Hope I got my gloves up here. Yep, they're right here. Well, let's go. So I think I'll share a little insider tip with you. Well, I'm not an insider, but uh, here's something I've uh, learned and discovered. This tool right here, which is just a roller painter's tool. They use it for cleaning paint brushes and rollers and so on and so forth. But this little end right here has been so invaluable to pick out this die core that's been put around some of these screw heads. I'll show you. So yeah, you can just dig down in here around these screw heads and I found that a motion that you can wrap around it and then pull back works the best to get this uh, old die core out of there so you can get onto the screw head. You don't have to clean it completely off, you just got to get into it enough to where you can get to the screw head. That should do it. So when I peeled this corner back, I think I found some black mold, and so I went and got a particulate mask. Aspergillus niger is nothing to mess with. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit more prep work up here before I start peeling this rubber off. So since this is black mold, I'm being super careful, and I'm trying to get a hold of all of the debris and get it all bagged up and thrown away so I don't have to uh, deal with this later. Well, I think I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> Excuse the mask. But it does look like black mold up here. I'm going to be replacing the insulation and I'm also going to get some bleach water and bleach the stuffing out of it. Yeah. All right. This is going to take a while and you're probably bored. So peace. We'll see you in a bit. 
And then here's just a little bit of a time lapse of me continuing to do the demolition. Uh, keeping in mind that in this area that you see me working on right now, that's where the black mold is. So I'm being super careful to uh, strip those strips up very carefully and uh, get them disposed of right away so that black mold's not hanging around. Okay, so that's it for episode one. We've got the roof equipment off. Some of the roof peeled back and discovered some black mold. So I've got that pretty much remediated. Coming up in episode two, then we're going to be uh, continuing to install the sheathing. I'll show you how to locate for vents and the penetrations through the sheathing you need for like your uh, kitchen vent, bathroom vent, AC units, and that kind of stuff. So you'll want to stick around for that. I really do love interacting with the audience, so please leave your questions or comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can let me know if you think I'm crazy, and I'm pretty sure I am, but it turned out really well, so I'm really happy with the results. As always, if you like what you're seeing, give me that thumbs up. That's always helpful. It lets me know you like it. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, there's three more videos to come in this series uh, before we get to the uh, end point that I am publishing a summary video of all four videos kind of rolled up into one. I'll cut out a lot of the the chitter chatter and uh, make it more just detailed. I have a lot of other RV how-to videos uh, that I've done and posted on my channel here so I invite you to check those out. And then also stay tuned because coming up I'm going to be doing the solar install where I'm putting six 310 watt solar panels on the roof. Don't forget to click the bell for notifications when I post new videos. But that'll have to do it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. I really do appreciate it. Until we get together again. Peace.